everybody, and welcome back to the All Right Podcast. Remember, it's not the best podcast, but it's not the worst podcast. It's just an All Right Podcast. Guys, we're back with another banger of an episode, and I have a good guest on as well. I don't usually say that when I have guests, but this guy is fucking <laughs> funny, right? So uh, this is episode 51 of the All Right Podcast. Um, so right now, I have Aiden Gavin with us right now. Please, I, I said that right, didn't I? I said that name. Yeah, yeah you did. Okay. Hi. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Aiden, if you want to give a bit about yourself, please. So I'm Aiden. <laughs> I'm twenty from Dublin, and yeah, that's all. I don't like saying anything nice about myself. It sounded like it sounded like you were put in front of a camera and you were doing like a chat show, and it's like Love Island. It's like, hi, I'm Aiden. Yeah, I'm twenty. I'm from Dublin. Yeah, <laughs> I'm an alcoholic. Yeah, fair enough. Grant. <laughs> Sorry. Um. Yeah. So, but Aiden, Aiden does. Um. I I oh. start noticing Aiden when he was doing. Um. You start doing YouTube videos now. I'm not sure if you do them anymore. I haven't seen any now. But I might be making a return. You never I, know. I um. I was doing YouTube videos for five years, and I only reached a thousand now. You done it for a few months, and you got over. I was like, fucking hell. Well, you deserve it anyway. Did you get me? So I was like, Jesus yeah. Christ. But, well, I haven't posted in. God, over probably a year, and I have like one point three, which like isn't a lot anyway. But yeah, yeah, it was kind of, it was all crazy at the time when it happened. And anyway. what what was the reason for you to start making and um, then videos like like making them kind of videos, reaction videos? All because which are little. We're well, getting into little mix because I know you have an obsession with little mix. I know that, right? Don't look. <laughs> I know, right? So what 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 was it that got you into doing uh, starting making these videos? I think it was just one morning I woke up and I was like, oh, that's something I really, really want to do. It was like, I couldn't, I didn't care. I'd love being in front of the camera. I was just like, I'm going to do it. Mm. So I was going to school one morning and I started vlogging and it was the worst, I literally it's captioned, the worst vlog on YouTube, like yeah. so bad. Um, and then, yeah, I just started vlogging like concerts and stuff. Like I didn't see what was getting views. So I kind of went with that. Mm. Um, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, because because as as you were saying that you you wanted to do it and so like that, but I could see that you're into theatre as well, and so and like is I want to mm-hmm. go back to like kind of childhood, right? Um, mm-hmm. so uh, when you started, when you, when did you start realizing that you wanted to do stuff like that? You wanted to do like acting and theatre, and so I think from a very young age, like when I was kind of like three, mm-hmm. as I can remember, but I get old stories, mm-hmm. um of me dancing in the nude, which I still haven't seen yet, which I don't think I want to see. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not as skinny as I was then. Right. But um, no, yeah, I just think I've always, well, for me, it was always singing. Mm-hmm. Uh, singing was always something I've always done um, from your age, always up on karaoke. My whole family would have been kind of musically orientated. And then dance came out of nowhere. It was like, mm. oh. Yeah, I like this. I like dancing I myself. I like dancing. Myself. Yeah. yeah, well, not not your type of dancing, like the warm and. Oh no no no! Yeah. I like I like all that <laughs> other type of stuff as well. I like I like yeah. uh, any type of dance now. Hip hop um, and stuff, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, and then so obviously I joined that a dance school, dizzy footwork, and I'm still there to this day. And then Axon came about in secondary school. Mm-hmm. Um, I done like short plays and stuff like that. And they were really fun. I won like loads of little awards and like best male actor, best sport male actor. Like that was mm. like my highlight of my career. Mm. <laughs> um, and then the panto and stuff like that. So yeah, that's really that's yeah. really. I'd love to do it full time. And what what was it when you started off doing that? Um, obviously in school, um, there's kids that were like, "What the fuck? What's this?" Like they don't really understand. And so so when you start doing that, and there was probably there's probably kids in school that were like, you know, a lot of kids are harsh, they slag. And so, um, what, what, what way did you take uh, towards that? Like, did you kind of embrace it and go, I'm going to show you or were you kind of like, Oh, should I stop? Or what was going through your head at that time? Like, it was kind of like the younger I was, the more I didn't care. Hmm. Um, so like people are going to, no matter what you do, people are going to comment on, people mm-hmm. are just going to hate you no matter what you do. You do something good, people are gonna hate you. Um and I think that that's important to remember when doing stuff like that. For me, it was when I left school, everything I was like, oh, Jesus, like yeah. that's when I like that's when I stopped singing and everything kind of went downhill and then I was missing out on opportunities that 
you know, I could have done that, like, could have been amazing. Mm. And I let all that go to my head, which I wish I didn't. Mm. But I think it's just important to do what you want to do and block all of that out. Because mm. at the end of the day, once you do it, you've done it and it's fun and you'll remember that memory for, for forever. Mm. Like, you know? I think, yeah, I think that's, I think that's good, um, good sign as well. I think, I think that's very important, especially if you want to do theater acting. So, because there is the type of people that would sit around the shop and they'd do nothing but sit around the shop and they're, they're, they're criticizing people that want to go out and pursue their dreams or they want to go out and do yeah. something that they know they're not capable of doing because it's, it's kind of jealousy in a way as well because they wish they it could is. do more. I think everything is jealousy. I think no matter what you do, someone has to get jealous in any way. Mm. Um, and I think it's so hard to not just pursue your dreams in no matter what they are, but especially in theatre, like the amount of knockbacks, I think, and in life you just get so many knockbacks and I think you just have to come back that 10 times stronger. Yeah, and that's what helps you, isn't it? To, that's what makes you grow and gets you stronger. That's what they say. They say that it helps you stronger. If it's tough times, and get you get through it, you come over stronger. But I, yeah. do you know what? I, I have to admire you in a way as well, right? Because... When you go to the concerts and you do the lit mix concerts um, and you're recording, I fucking love when you just, you don't give a fuck who is around you. You just show your love towards them women and you're just like, yeah, my God, yes. And you're fucking shit. And I know there's some people that I've seen in comments that go, oh my God, it's over the top or not. But I think it's like, that's pure joy right there. I can tell yeah. by your fucking voice and your tone, that's pure joy and the way them women fucking make you feel and how good they make you feel. Themselves. And what is it about um, Little Mix that you start, that you like about, what is it about them? Did they help you through a difficult time? Is it that you, that's what you want to, that's what you want to do yourself and they're like your inspiration? What is it? Well, I think from 2011 is when obviously Little Mix came about and I fell in love. Obviously, yeah. Obviously. And I think they've just, I don't know, they've just been there in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a close relationship with the girls and a really close relationship with a group of fans that um, also love the girls that I've met through meeting them. We're called the Usuals. We have our mm-hmm. own little group chat. Lovely. And I think we're hated by every single Little Mix member because mm-hmm. we've just finished a Zoom call with two members, um, which was incredible, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but I just, I think that they've always been there for me and their music was something that I could always relate back to no matter what. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, for me, I'm, I love concerts and I love shows and that's where I feel I'm happiest when yeah. I'm there. And obviously when I'm performing, like it's the same, it's the same kind of idea. But um, no, it doesn't just no better feeling than being at a concert, especially a little bit's concert. So you're so if say if we're like a lot there's a lot of like people have different opinions, but say if we all when we all pass away and you say you go to a special place and you could choose your special place, would your special place be a little mixed concert there for the rest of eternity eternity? Yeah, it would definitely yeah. be something and like have everybody that you're real close to all in the same like and then you're just living that dream out and you can obviously That'd be so cool. That imagine, imagine it's so it's so good. Um, trapped in the tree arena could you imagine a bit of mix is like right I need to go fuck off it's like no you're in my fucking you're in my dream now um, but but like of this um, I do want to talk about as well and I did ask you before if there's anything you don't want to mention but you said you're an open book I want I want mm-hmm. to talk about um, when you were a kid you're um, you, you, you are a you're a gay man is that that's mm-hmm. correct yeah and yeah. I just I, I is it is it okay if we talk about this it's all right I, I yeah, know yeah. that you're open but um if I say anything wrong or you just stop me I can edit it out um I, um but I want to I want to ask when you were younger and um, when when did you realize that um you you were gay I think it was the transition from primary school to secondary school was when I started realizing um for me i would have always been flagged and bullied as a young child and mm-hmm. um, dealt with it okay in some ways but then some days obviously have your bad days and um, but i'd always be called gay no matter what it was yeah. like the number one that's what all kids call even if you weren't gay that's the word that that was the word to call you like literally that's what all literally. kids were called yeah and because kids thought it was a really funny word to say like and the older you get you're just realizing going no it's actually just 
it's I think even still when I was in secondary school, like lads calling each other faggots or like yeah, you know exactly. that way. Yeah. It's yeah. just the kind of the norm. Yeah. But yeah, that's when it was kind of like, Am I because people are calling me yeah. gay? Is that why? And um but now it's just as the transition went on to secondary school, I came out to friends and they were like we already know, like yeah, what they, they fucking, yeah, they fucking knew, like yeah. Like, you're the last, oh, oh. you were last to the party. Everybody was there waiting, and you just had to come through the fucking door, yeah, literally, yeah, literally. And um, so then they were like, okay, maybe you should tell your parents. And I think the one thing my parents were scared about was just protecting me. Yeah, they were just they were more afraid of what other people would do on the outside. And mm. um, they know how I how I'd cope, but. When I first came out, they were like, like, you know, maybe just wait a few years, like, you know, yeah. could just be a phase and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, at the time I was like, oh my God, they don't accept me. But when I look back at it now, it was like, protect, no, we're trying to protect yeah. you. Like, trying to protect but you. then I was 18 mm. and I broke down in the same room and my mom was like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, I don't know. And she was like, is it because you're gay? And I was like, I think so. And then that was it really yeah so yeah, that I'm, was the day of ex- like the day that you really realized like right this is this is it this is who i am yeah i just kind of had a, hmm. a bit of a breakdown yeah which you, is yeah. good to have <laughs> yeah oh yeah jesus yeah we all need a breakdown every now and again um but for the for the likes of that like because when we when i was kids the word the word faggot and the word gay would be thrown around um a lot um, and there would be some kids that y- you'd know, you'd, you'd know when we were all younger, we know, we knew it, um, but they would get a really hard time. And I, I never, even as a young kid, I never understood why as mm-hmm. a young kid. Um, but while you were in school, I, I, I seen a photo, I think it was the, it was in sixth year, which was last year. Now you're probably like he's a fucking stalker, but no, I just I, I have you as a friend, so I I fucking I I see these posts and so on, yeah. whatever. And I seen that everybody was it was fucking it was like iconic, okay? It, it literally oh, shows you as a person. Uh, it does. Like I don't really know, like we don't really know each other. Like that, that's gone, so we know that. But I can tell what type of person you are just by that photo. And if people don't know, it's this photo, right? And everybody they're in their school uniforms. And they're all taking a photo. It's like the, the last photo of the year. With this, and Aiden's there and he's fucking striking his stuff and he's fucking doing it. And everybody, you can see the laughter on everybody's face. You can see it. And there's always that person in school that you know that this person right here is a, a lovable person. It's a funny person. And it just, it's are so fun to be around. And I could imagine being in school with you and in school, I was very quiet. I was very quiet. I, w- I wouldn't even raise my hand in class. But I guarantee you, if I was in the same class as you, I'd fucking love it. I'd love yeah. it. Were you, were you like a class clown? Like, did you like to entertain the cl- and try to get a laugh in class? Or were you more like, right, well, I'm just going to stay to myself? Because I think, I think you'd be more, you'd love to fucking give a show or something. I, I think you'd like yeah. to laugh. Am I right? I'd always, no, I would. I would love, love to give a little bit of a show. Um, yeah, I just would have to laugh. I wouldn't say like I'd be trying to be funny. It would yeah. just kind of like happen or get into giddy humours. But yeah. that photo still to this day cracks me up. I still can't remember how it happened. I think I, I think someone said give us a pole. Or I don't know yeah. what happened. Yeah. I think I was sitting down and I stood up. I don't remember. And I just posed. <laughs> and everyone like the whole, I felt like the whole skill was laughing because all the teachers were behind the camera. Yeah, yeah. So it was like the hysterics are laughing. I was like, yeah. how is this even and funny? Like, I'm just so serious. You were it. You can, you, you're fucking, you were owning it. You were fucking like owning that. You were like, stuff. if I'm doing this, I'm going 110% in this fucking photo. And I guarantee you, like, in your old school, do they hang up all the old photos of everybody, like, in a, in a place? Because where I went, I went to St. Kevin's um, Community College in Font Hill Road. And they still have, I, I finished school in 2012. I was like 16. Uh, we didn't have any fourth years, so I, I finished when I was 16, and I'm now 20 fucking four. And um, they still have my photo up there. Do they, do they have them? Do they put photos up in your school when they're leaving? No, they don't have any memories of me in that school. Oh, for fuck's sake. Honestly, okay. the iconic. Because I used to always do the school show, and um, 
like I remember it was my last year and I was so excited like I had a big like half the show was dedicated to me like yeah, we had yeah, yeah. bands <laughs> like pyro uh, everything like fire jets we had yeah, it all yeah. and um, I remember my son my, my science and math teacher at the time um, but she was also a producer of the show she came up to me and she caught me out and she was like she caught my friends out as well because she was like obviously for comfort or whatever and she's like look I have to break it to you it's like um we can't put on a, sh- a show this year and I was just like funny and she was like no like we actually can't put on a show this year we have, we have no money and no one wants to do it like and I was just like my last year I was like are you serious they were like we can do like a small um I was like no not no small this is a sh- yeah. this is big yeah no we can't do it so I was like good like so good and they've <laughs> to this day they've never done one oh shit and it's like four years later oh shit so I think I need to match in there and revive. I think yeah, revive you have to the come life. Back. I think you should be good. You could go to college and um, become a drama teacher, drama teacher, go back to that school and put on the, the last show that you could never get to do. Imagine you've done that. Imagine. Imagine. And make a Netflix series about it. Yeah. And you fucking just get a lot of people flying around with cameras and sell off the Netflix. Um, but um, yeah, so when, um, sorry, we're kind of going on to a different topic now uh, and for likes of that. But I've also noticed that you you have like, what would I say? It's like Beyonce when she has a different fucking person. It's it's you. It's like it's like an alter ego. You have you do drag, isn't that right? You do you you do you do drag and you do shows and stuff like that as well. And what what made you start that? Because I when my friend Sarah, uh, she's a makeup artist and she just uh, finished her uh, college there and she she passed and everything. She only told us the other day. And um, oh, brilliant. Well done, Sarah, if you're watching. Well done, and, Sarah. So proud. <laughs> and she got had to do, for one of her times, she had to put me into drag makeup. And I was like, yeah, I don't care. Like, I, I, I'm real, like, open with sexuality. People would say, you're very, um, what was that? You're very, um, I can't think of the word. If I can think of the word, I'll, I'll come back to I'll come back to you on it. But I'm, I'm very open with my sexual. I don't, I don't care what people think of me. I'll dress up as a woman if I want. I, I'll put on makeup. I don't care. Um, but, she asked me to do it and I said, yeah. And she done it for me and she put on the big, huge fucking uh, blonde wig. She fucking done my eyes fucking like that. And she put on yeah. the big fucking lashes. She done everything. And I got, she done a good job that I got all the uh, photography students came in and they goes, can we get him and put him into a room? So I went into a different room. Now I'm like you. If I have an opportunity, I don't fucking miss it. I'll fucking show up. I'll do it. it. I'll do it. And um, there was a green screen there and they were taking shots and they were like pose and I was fucking giving it loads like I was doing the Ben Stiller, everything. And um, so when I was doing that, I actually looked and I realized and I goes, this is actually like nice. Like I like like I like the look. I if I, if I was a woman, I'm more. I've always said I'd be more attractive as a woman than I am as a man. And I fucking mm-hmm. that's a quote that I'll fucking hold on to. Um, I'm but, the same. <laughs> Literally. And, and uh, fucking. So when you started off doing that, um, did you, what was the interest for? It? What what got you interested to start doing that? Um. But when I did start experimenting with drag was when I was a 16, 17, um, or was it 18? I think it was 17, 18. And um, like, I thought it'd be so easy. Mm. Like, I thought I'd be dead at this. Mm. And obviously looking up to the likes of Paul Ryder and stuff like that, like, he's uh, incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was one of my inspirations to start drag. Um, but yeah, it's so expensive. Yeah. It's so hard. Oh, I'd say so. Like, I, like I had a couple of gigs that I was doing, um, but yeah, I just started feeling shit. Then I just was like, no, I don't feel good enough. Mm-hmm. Like I can't do this. And then obviously last January just gone, I got my first role as a panto dame, which was mm-hmm. incredible. Mm-hmm. So I played an ugly sister and had to look ugly, but. <laughs> it was still dragging it was still fun like I definitely do feel like what you're saying like it's it is an alter ego Mm -hmm. like I feel like my true self can kind of come out when I'm in drag because I can have my character Mm -hmm. do you know that kind of way Uh, which I love but now yeah it was so fun 
it was so fun. And I get what you're saying about like your masculinity and stuff like that. Like you just you've no you've got no filter, like you're exactly. completely open with yourself, mm-hmm. you don't mind expressing yourself. No. Um, which I think is fine. It's a bit of makeup, like do you know what yeah, I mean? It comes it's, off. It's exactly. not it doesn't define you really. Yeah. Um, I thought the word I would I would be literally I'd be very camp I really would like if I mm, if I if you got to know me like I'm I'm fucking camp do you get me and um, mm-hmm. I'm very camp and especially if I'm around a group of girls I just come out and they're like they literally I'm not messing even my ma says it to me she goes you're gay and I'm like I'm not and she's like the, just not, the way yeah. you go on and you act I go I'm just camp like I'm just very I'm just camp I, goes, I, I just don't want, as you said, masculinity. I don't, I don't go, oh, all right, what's the story? I fucking hate people yeah. like that. I don't, I don't like people that are afraid to be themselves and be themselves. do what they do. And so, I, I, it's just, it's the lying to themselves. I don't like it. So It's horrible uh, when I see it and I see like a group of lads and like, you just, you just know that one of them doesn't fit in. Like it must be so scary. Like yeah, and they you know and they way. have they're trying to fit in with that group because they're trying to be someone they're not. And it's and they'll do anything. Oh, literally, anything. yeah. There's there's people there's people that try to fit in that go out and beat up people. They they uh, rob people and stuff like that. Like there's so many situations and they don't want to be in that, but they don't want to um be known as like a loner or something like that. Or they, they just want to fit mm-hmm. in a group. And when we're when we were growing up, um, that's what you'd feel. You want to fit in with a certain group. You want to yeah. be, I mean, you don't want to be... Exactly. On- we've all had that moment where I think we've we've done something to try and fit in. No matter if it's like changing our appearance or yeah. maybe like we've all bought the same shoes that, that's on trend. Like we've all done something, mm-hmm. I think, to fit in. Yeah. I think we. I, I think with the likes of Instagram as well, um, a lot of people, yeah. a lot of people do that. That that that's not their life. That's not what they do, and they just do it just to get a few likes and stuff like that. But that's it's what I want. That's what I want to go over to. Find, well. oh, sorry, sorry. Go on, go on, go on. I even find myself though, like especially in the LGBT community, I look at like there's so many stereotypes, and I find that. In the last kind of year, especially being in quarantine, that's actually made me think. I feel like I'm coming out of quarantine. I'm a totally different person. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, it has made me think of like, why do I keep putting myself and labeling myself in a certain mm-hmm. stereotype? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to be like a skinny little stick that everyone's going to. Do you know that kind of way? Yeah. I need to stop like picturing myself for this person. Like, oh, why doesn't this happen? Or why? am I really skinny or why haven't I like really masculine or why haven't I got like a six pack or yeah yeah do you know that kind of way and I yeah. think that that's so important especially anyone who is listening that might be LGBT that's not who or just mm-hmm. or even just anyone who you know compares themselves to anyone and I think especially with TikTok and especially with Instagram it's a platform full of creative people don't get me wrong but a lot a lot a lot of young children are on those apps yeah like a lot like i like my tiktok like it's so fun i love it it's so creative yeah. and i'm literally there i'm on it to be creative i'm not on it for like fame followers anything like mm. that like what most people are on it for mm. um but uh, most of my followers are like aged like 9 to 16 yeah. like yeah they're so young yeah and like they actually cry their eyes out if you even like their comments they, they yeah think i know it's so it's you know so that way nice. like yeah 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 it's so and nice. it's just i think it's crazy how young like they can they already idolize you and like do you know that kind of way yeah. like so you just need to be so careful of what you're saying but exactly i like, can even my my sister like she would look at like she is perfect like mm. she was made by the gods yeah um and she'd be like oh i'm fat yeah like, and you're no, just no. there going, what the fuck? I'm like, I'm fat. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you saying? On, this, this is jelly. You're yeah. like cream. Yeah, jelly like, and cream. That's a lovely, like, that's a lovely duo. It's lovely. It's a lovely yeah. duo. <laughs> jelly and cream. Um, well, I think you're right with the TikTok because there is there is the majority of the um, the people that are on that are kids. Um, mm-hmm. there is adults getting onto now uh, celebrities because a few years ago celebrities didn't see YouTube as a certain platform to put stuff now look at them Kevin Hart has their own series and everything on it Will Smith is on it and now with TikTok all these celebrities are noticing that oh it's the internet 
that is much better than actually going onto a talk show mm-hmm. nowadays. So I think with YouTube though, mm-hmm. YouTube is such a effort, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like you've got to get an intro, you've got to get an in, you've got exactly. like it does take up your time, whereas TikTok, it's kind of it's more instant. It's yeah. kind of like Instagram, it's so instant. Yeah. And like if you look at the likes of like you know, like Doja Cat and stuff, like she has like soared like it's such a good platform for artists with their music and um, fashion everything like i think it 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 completely took off like i remember it started off as musically remember yeah, and all the yeah, kids I were doing that, those yeah. really annoying dances and i was like yeah. stop yeah stop right now yeah please <laughs> um, and then i think it was in january this was when tiktok was booming and um i was at mabel uh, in the Olympia and all these kids the say so song came on and they were all like oh I was literally cringing and I was like stop and then we have a TikTok account and I'm like okay <laughs> yeah that's my own fault <laughs> I think I think I think for the likes of yourself as well that you do you do um I seen the TikTok you put up and I I more definitely I know it's you that was singing it and you were singing Tala you know, you were doing the Carol Baskin, but uh, I fucking, I'm telling you now, I'll say this off camera as well. I don't care. When I watched that, I was like, that is fucking genius. That is so good. <laughs> like, fucking fair play for that. That was so good. That's so creative. You mean, you're making up your own lyrics. You're only doing that. Like, it's, it's so creative. Um, and since I watched your videos and stuff, you can see that you have your own originality to you. You, you can honestly, God on his truth, um, you literally have your own originality. And that's hard to Thank find. You. That's so hard to find. Like a lot of people, a lot of people copy off other people and so, but when you find something, and I know it could take a while, but when you find something that's actually you and it represents you and who you are and you stick with it, that's that. That's what I think of you. That's a God on his truth. You're really original. Um, so thank you. Um, I didn't want to say yeah. that to you. <laughs> thank. Uh, no, it did do really well. I was surprised actually because I had the sound for like ages. Like I think I came up with it in March, mm. and I just kept putting it off and putting it off because it was. I had to make the sound with my recording equipment, and then I had to like edit it on my computer and then send it to my phone yeah. and then I didn't know like you can't add a sound to TikTok and record it on TikTok you have mm-hmm. to like I had to play the sound from my email record it on Snapchat then edit it then match up the music I was like it's a lot of like, effort isn't it like a I don't even know how to do this yeah and uh, when you started uh, making videos as well and you started had to do editing now I'm gonna I, I, I remember something and I don't know if you remember or not but when I start noticing when you were doing your vlogs and all, you wanted to do a short film, and yeah, and yeah, we, actually. we actually got in contact and we were going to do a short film, but I, we just I couldn't. I had so many fucking things. I wanted to make my own short films, and I made my short films. Um, yeah, but, which are um, brilliant, by the way. Thanks very much. I really appreciate it. Um, but I I did like the idea that what you were doing. I did, I got on this truth. I really did like the idea. And I remember you saying, what, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And we were going to even involve my dad and everything. And we were going to, remember, we were going to see, can we film at my house, my ma's house? Because since then, I have my own place now. I'm like in a little fucking granny flat beside someone's house, like only 10, 15 minutes Ooh. on the road. From, I know, it's good to mention. Um, but um, yeah, so there's a lot more space now for me to do things. But for the likes of yourself, when you're making these videos, um, do you have a lot of space? Because when I when I when I was doing it in my ma's, I literally have I've three brothers and one sister, and then my ma and dad. We all lived, and I lived in fucking. Bunk. This is the first time ever I had a fucking single bed or double bed to myself. I've never, ever, ever had it. I was always in bunk beds and I sleep in there. So I'm 24 now. Moved out when I was what 20, yeah, 23, 22 or so. So for the likes of yourself, was it always easy to make videos while there was other people in the house? I think I just get, it's more like I get stage fright. <laughs> I'm like, I hate people hearing me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like my room recently got done up, which is great. Mm, I, I can see that. I can see the like, wallpaper, the brick. I like that. I like that. I was like, like, oh my God, what am I doing with my room? Um, but yeah, now I have it. It's it's a little bit, um, it's nicer to have now a nicer room and kind of a, 
a way to record mm. yeah everything it's just the dog if the dog barks she gets a <laughs> not that I have yield animal oh, but I'm God. like yeah, she's, we just have to she's so cute. Yeah. Like I'm she's a little yeah. um Chihuahua and Pomeranian. Yeah. And she's like ginger. No offense to gingers. It's all right. We call her we call her honey. Yeah. And uh oh, she just barks all the time. Yeah. Like you walk downstairs, she barks them like I'm just walking downstairs. Yeah, I'm just fucking no walking past it. Yeah. <laughs> you roll over in the bed and she's like Arr! I'm like <laughs> Don't start me with the postman. The postman. Oh, come here, all fucking dog. He's actually afraid of my house. Because yeah. <laughs> like, I got a delivery the other day. I got a delivery the other day, and your man was petrified. <laughs> <laughs> I should have got it and recorded. It would have went viral on TikTok. The anyway. next time he comes out, the next time he delivers the post, you should let the dog out and see what happens, or you should you should record it for TikTok. Try and make sure the dog doesn't bite the man or anything, but see can you get something I funny out of it. <laughs> um, but I have two dogs as well. I have a pug, um, oh. uh, Penny, and then I have um, a chug. It's like a Chihuahua pug, and she's oh. more. Her nose is more out, so her breathing's better. But I got her like two years ago. But then I got Penny last year, and I both got them for my birthday, um, one year after the other, because I needed them to have a friend. But they fucking bark like. I, the minute you said that I was like I can I know what you're talking about like I can, mm. I can feel the pain like it's horrible and Halloween is like the worst isn't it oh, li- like- yeah yeah literally the fires the bang works uh, bang works fucking what's bang works um, fucking uh, bangers everything fireworks yeah, you know yourself um, yeah. but uh, yeah I want to get in so we're gonna I do right so I do want to get you back on to talk about more but I'm trying to get this podcast as small like I mean probably a half an hour yeah. or less but I, I do want mm-hmm. you back on um, for like that but I'm, I'm going to get into my last segment now because mm-hmm. the next time you come back on I want to ask more questions get a bit you know, yeah, yeah. about you yeah. so, well for guys so this is the last segment this is ghost stories right so this is my favorite. That was so segment. weird. I had my earphones in, and that was just Hello, like really awesome. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <I just. laughs> right, right, guys. So this is my favorite segment. People know this is only new to my yoke, and I'm obsessed with all this type of stuff, right? And even if you're a believer or not, I, I I'm still obsessed with it. So I have two questions. Um, one: Do you believe in the afterlife? Do you believe in ghosts and like that? Um, and two: Do you have a story you can tell? Oh my god! Oh, there it is. Um. Mm. Sorry. No, sorry, sorry. Um, and do you have a story we you could tell, or do you know anybody that something's ever happened to him that's kind of spooky? Spooky. Ooh. I never use spooky in my life. Why did I say spooky? I know spooky. That's weird. Um, I definitely do. Like it really interests me. Like I have such an interest in horror films because they make me laugh, which yeah. is really, really, which is weird. That's psychotic. Like, it, it is. No, it really is. Like, if there's something scary, I'll, if I want to, wa- if I want to watch something funny, I will watch a horror film because yeah. it makes me laugh. And yeah. um, I think I don't know what it is. I think it's like the suspense, like, <laughs> but um, no, 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 it ever happened to me. Um, weirdly enough, like I've always, I'm always like, if there's a ghost in my room, make a sound. I'm like that as well. Fine. There's so many yeah. people like that. I know there is. I know there's people like that. And I'm just like hoping that there's like a goblin or something in my attic that there never is. Like, um, yeah, that's crazy because I love watching all those. Like, um, you know, when like the ghost hunters go out to houses and like yeah. they're in the room and they have the yeah. little thing and a like, green that's light, funny. and I'm like, oh, that's funny. like love that. Yeah, that's like, funny. That's really entertaining like to watch. Yeah, like I wouldn't like I've always been obsessed with like the Hellfire Club and stuff like that. Like when they yeah. stay overnight and. Would you ever do it? Or have you done it before? Would you no, ever I do it? I haven't done it before. I probably so. would do it. Oh, I would. I'd, have I'd to, fucking, like, I'd bitch out and I'd fucking just... Not me out. See, I love stuff. I love, like, all witchcraft and, like, stuff like that, like, angels mm. and all. Mm. I'm big into witchcraft. Mm. I don't would, know why. Would you believe in um, going to um, fortune tellers and stuff, like a psychic job, people that can speak to the dead and they can talk and do your cards? Do you believe in all that? There's the dog barking. There's the dog. It's making an introduction. Together. Yeah, that's yeah. Um, ask you the question again. Cause sorry, the question. sorry. Anyway, um, do you <laughs> believe in card readings? Do you believe that someone oh. could actually talk to the dead? Do you believe in all that? That like, they can tell you things that are gonna come true. I don't know. Yeah, I did get an angel card reading before, but like, 
that was that's important. Yeah. yeah. I hear stories of people like when they say like that they've gone to a psychic or a fortune teller and like they tell them things that nobody could really know. Yeah. Um, which is crazy. Yeah, that's weird, um, yeah. So I don't know. I do think that there is people I don't know. Yeah. You know. It's a weird like, I, think you, I, I, think, I think I think you think the same thing I think. And what it is is that there is people out there that are genuine like that, but most of them are fake. Most of them are not real. They're just doing it to make money or to get noticed or whatever. Um, because uh, they do charge a lot of people um, money, like 50 euro for a reading and stuff and all. And, and mm-hmm. more like not be legit. But you know when you said that uh, some people can tell people things? Um, that they don't know. They that don't happens know. to my ma or my dad, and they'd say it. And to this day, they have not told each other, like, they'd have something and they wouldn't even tell their parent or they wouldn't tell a kid yeah. like me, like to me. But they go, but I'm telling you now, when she said that in my ear, she whispered in my ear or something like that, she said, she was able to say what I said to someone when they were dying. When I, like, I'm not in jail. I can't say who it is, right? Because I want to go, but someone I know, their, um, their parents, like, you know, one of them was dying and they whispered something in their ear. And then when they went to see this psychic, um, yeah, they literally went up to them. First thing was, they went straight up to them, walked up to them, uh, and whispered in their ear the exact same thing that he told his parents, like one of his parents, and he didn't tell. He hasn't told not even his boy for anything this because it was between them two, and his face went pure. Mm-hmm. And I know them, like I, I'm real close to them, and their face just, and he's, he did, it's the type of person that, they don't like lawyers. They don't like lying. So I know that they're telling the truth. It's like, you know them type of, yeah, you can tell them type of people that mm-hmm. are bullshit and not. But that face went fucking snow white. And they were like, how the fuck do you know that? And she just went back up on stage and went around because this girl goes around. And this type of girl, um, her name is Mary Stokes. She's real famous over here in Dublin and Ireland and so like that. And she actually helped the FBI out over in America with a few cases saying that this is where the body's buried. This is what she looks like. This is how you're going to find her. And when they found her, it was the exact same description. I'm there going, this bitch went over to America and killed people and came back. But now literally, oh, so literally that's like, that's how fucking freaky it is. And she gets so many people. Come, when she comes back over, um, I'm going to go to her. She, now, she doesn't come up to you and read everybody. She just senses things. And then if she's going to talk to you or she needs to talk to you, she'll go talk to you. She'll go over yeah, to you. Yeah, I think, though, I think that we all have something like that, like a spidey sense. Mm. Like, sometimes I'll sense things and I'd be like, no, I don't think that. Or, like, do you, do you get me? Yeah, like, no. I'll sometimes I'll, I don't know, I can't really, like, like even no. when, like if I'm going to meet a little mix or something, I'll be like, when I go home, and then I'll be like, no, I think they're gonna come out, and then like ten minutes later they'll walk out of the hotel, I'll be like, hi, hi, hello. <laughs> I'm just gonna go home. Could you yeah. imagine? Yeah. Well, that that's what that's why I really wanted to ask because I I am really interested, and I I can see by your excitement as well when you're when you're talking about your interest in it as well. And um, but mm-hmm. as I said already, I I'd love to have you back on. So if you'd like to come back on, please. I oh, of I, course. I I really enjoyed so this fun. podcast. Um. I'm, I'm, this is episode 51 um the episode mm-hmm. just done previously um was with steve otimity and um, the facebook fella joey sits in the car oh, and he's yeah. like Farm and Mike. i got him on i done that so um um yeah so that was real fun so i'm trying to get as much guests but interesting guests i don't want someone coming on saying yeah I stand at a bus stop all day me and the boys just smoke a load of weed <laughs> i don't want them type of people on. they're fucking wasters they're not doing anything so i i want interesting people on i want people that are doing things with themselves and you're one of them that's a god on the street so uh, thanks. <laughs> we do, i don't i don't know you that i don't know you that well but what i can get off you and the vibe off you is that you're you're a nice person i can tell that you're a genuine person and that what you're doing you, you, you have passion for it so um fair fair play to you for that um, thank you no problem at all so um is there anything you'd like to plug your tiktok or anything do you want any instagram or anything that i can put down in the description below yeah sure um so my instagram is at it's aiden g with a z mm-hmm. same as my youtube and my tiktok is just aiden gavin right and that's thanks. it and i want to say thanks for having me on because i think you are very hard working mm. i think you never gave up in terms of like you know you pushed and pushed and pushed your youtube channel 
like you're still going you didn't take a break like I gave up I was like no I can't do this mm. but I think hats off to you because no matter what um, I think you just kept 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 yep. I fucking kept kept yeah, yeah. what the kept uh, you kept coming with content no matter what mm. um, so hats off round of applause now can you get a, a applause on Zoom and you raise you. your hand or thanks, clap? Thanks, 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 very much. Thanks very much. Thank you. There, look, clap. Yeah, I did. I fucking. Yeah. Oh, there's a fucking clap. How do I do that? I clapped for you. I'm such see? a. Fu- oh my god. Thanks very much. Yeah, I can right. see that. I can fucking see that. Um, it, it, before we go, I want to ask. You, I know this is supposed to be end of it, but I want to ask: When someone gives you a compliment, are you then type? Mm-hmm. Are you that type of person that goes? Okay, just get it fucking like thanks so much. I really yeah, appreciate yeah. this, but you're here. You're one of that. I'm like I, I genuinely thanks so much for saying that. That's really nice. But, but it's not like I hate it. It's like yeah. it's yeah, you I, don't like, hate I it, but it's just it. yeah, exactly. I want yeah, to hear you're it, like, but I'm feed like it to me. I want to fucking yeah. I want it to be over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so just thanks for that because um I think out through these fifty podcasts, uh fifty one podcasts, you're the first person to say that. So I, you're the first oh. one to say that. So thanks very much uh for that. Um but nice yeah guys, so that is it for this podcast. Um thanks so much for coming on, Aiden. Um no problem. And thanks guys for remember me. all the links are down in the description below. Um please go check them out. It's really, really funny. Um <laughs> And he shall be back on soon um, down the line sure. while doing these podcasts. Um, guys, thanks so much for watching this episode 51. And remember, it's not the best podcast, but it's not the worst podcast. It's just an all right podcast. Guys, thanks for I watching. I love it. <laughs> and peace. <laughs>